um, anything out of the ordinary for uh, there to be uh, conflicts and things of the nature that might hinder us. And again, we're gathered um, as a church, as a body of believers, we're gathered. And so when we do things like that and when we worship and when we're concentrating on God, you know what? It just kind of makes the enemy mad. And so he's tried to shut us down already, but we're going to overcome and we're going to prevail. So welcome back and glad that you're with us. Hey, I'm going to ask you to do a few things during the during this service here today. From where you are and what you're doing today, here's what I want you to do. I can't see you. I'm, I'm talking to an empty sanctuary at the moment, but I know that you're here. I can't hear you say amen. I can't hear you say thank the Lord. But here's what you can do. While you're out there on Facebook and you guys are joined in and tuned in, I want you to do some things for me that's there. I want you to give me some thumbs up and give me some um, some emojis or whatever it might be. As you just want to say amen and praise the Lord. Just let me know that you're getting those. Let me know that you're out there. I'll see those and I'll know those. It's me and my cameraman here this morning. And he's going to let me know when you're saying amen as well. So join in. Be part. Be interactive part of this service. So we're glad that you're going to be in the book of Acts this morning. As we move into God's Word and as we take time to, to spend a little time with Him and hear what He's got to say. And I'll tell you, church, that earlier in the week, I really, really sensed God giving me some understanding and some direction um, about a reminder, about His passages, about the things that He's taught me through Scripture. And He's taught all of us. And I really sensed that God was going to take that and He was going to expound upon it, that he was just going to make this message today. But as the week has gone by, and I've talked to fellow um, ministers that's out there, and we've talked about so many things, and I've talked to so many of you as well, as the week has gone by, and uh, I began to understand that God had something different in store for today. And for those of you that know me and know me well, you know that I don't ever want to do my own message, because it's not a message at that point. It's nothing more than me putting together a sermon. But I want to deliver God's message. And that's what's important to me. Because God is the one that we need to be listening to and not man. And so to that point today, God's going to have us in the book of Acts. And he's in, imparted something to me here. And I'm not so sure that he's not going to leave me here for a while as it comes to delivering his message to the church. Nevertheless, I'm just going to be obedient. And that's the way that we all need to be. So we're going to be in the book of Acts this morning, chapter number 16. And we're going to be looking at just one verse of scripture this morning in Acts chapter number 16 and verse number 28. And this is a rather familiar passage of scripture that we have heard a lot of times. And many of you know the backdrop to this story. And we're going to spend some time in that as well. But we're going to look at one verse, one passage of scripture that is out of the book of Acts, chapter number 16 and, and verse number 28. And this writing here says this, in this one verse, it says, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Bow your heads with me for just a moment as we take time to pray and ask God's blessing in this message here today. Father, we trust you. You're so good. We trust you, God, and we depend upon you today. And I ask, God, that you would take me as man out of the way and let me be nothing but a vessel for you. God, that you will just speak through me and that you will deliver what you have intended for all of us, Lord, that you would deliver it. Let me be the vessel to deliver the message here today that you have intended. I believe that you have something to say, so God, please say it. God, I ask that any hindrance, any distraction, anything that would prevent us from hearing from you, God, that you would bind it and that you would render it powerless and useless right now. Be with us in these next few moments, God. Speak to our hearts. Speak to us. Anoint our ears that we can hear you and what you would want for us, from us, through us, and in us. We ask this, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Many years ago, I started a career in sales. And when I started this career in sales, I, as most 
people that are in sales, as most people are, they are a commissioned employee, which means that they might earn some base income, but they have an opportunity to earn some additional income, hence the commissions when they make a sale or they meet their plan or they meet their target objectives. So I was very early into my career and I was very early into um, my sales job with this particular company. And after a few months of being on the job, I was at a point to where I was starting to earn commission. And, it, and I was so excited about earning commission. It was just, it was enjoyable for me, obviously, for, for, for obvious reasons. It was enjoyable for me, for me to, to earn commission, but I started to earn it. And, and each month, you know, my commission would be over and above whatever base income that the company was paying me to do. But there was this one particular month when a commission check came around and when I when I got my paycheck and I looked at it, I noticed that something was a little out of the ordinary. And when I looked at it, I noticed that there was a little more commission in that check than I was expecting. And when I noticed that there was a little more commission in that check than I was expecting, it caused me to pause and it caused me to have to take a little bit of time and to think about where did I make the mistake in what I thought that I was getting, or what I was going to get paid, where did I make the mistake to where I was getting more? I was excited. There's more money in my paycheck. Of course I'd be excited, right? So, so I had went back and I'd done the mathematics and the things that I was eligible for commission on, I calculated it all up and I noticed that what I had calculated originally, that's what I was due, but what I was being paid was more. And so I went to my manager and I talked to him and I, I said to my manager, I said, listen, there's some extra money that's in my paycheck and I don't quite know why. I don't know if there's, if there's more, if I misunderstood, if I've miscalculated. Can we walk through this? Can we talk about this together? And he said, sure. So we sat down and we began to look at all the things and ultimately he said, well, where's the extra money coming from? And I said, well, that's the very question that I'm asking you is where is the extra money coming from? And so we began to talk about it, and so ultimately we had to make a phone call over to payroll, and we had to make a phone call to human resources and to say, hey, I've been overpaid. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in, in a situation where you've gotten more than you expected. I think it's happened to us a few times where we've gone to the grocery store or a convenience store, or we've been out to a restaurant to where we might have paid our tab or paid our bill and we get change back and we get change back that is more than what it should be. So when that happens, what do we do? Do we stop? Do we question? Do we pause? Or do we just pocket the money? Well, in the case of where I had earned some extra commission, where I had earned some extra, or not earned, I shouldn't even say earned, but where I had received some extra money into my paycheck, I was at a point where I needed to do something about it. And so I went to management, and we made phone calls to payroll, we made phone calls to HR, and then ultimately it was determined, yes, by mistake, I had been overpaid. And when I had been overpaid, that required me to give the money back. And that required me to give them the money back. But I remember for a fleeting moment when I couldn't figure it out, when I couldn't add it all up, I had this, had this big question in my mind, should I say anything or should I do anything? And what should I do? Fortunately, God impressed upon me that I needed to do the right thing. I needed to do what would he expect me to do? I needed to do that. And I needed to do, from that perspective, what would be right in the eyes of everyone around me. What would be right, because ultimately what could happen is if I said nothing, it could be found out, and my integrity could have been tarnished. And it could have taken a hit. And it would have taken a long time to have overcome that. You've probably been there. And if you've been there before, tell you what, just give me a like or a thumbs up. Just let me know, hey, I've been there, Mark. I, I understand what you're saying. Give me those so that I know that we're all in tune and I'm not just the only person that this has ever happened to in his lifetime. 
But I think we've all been there, and we do have, for a fleeting moment, we do have a time where we just put that question mark in our mind. What should I do? We go back to our opening scripture here in Acts chapter 16, in verse number 28, where Paul is speaking. He says, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm. Thank you for those thumbs up, by the way. Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. It's important for us to look back as to what drove Paul to say this in the first place. If you go back in this passage of scripture in, in Acts chapter number 16, here's what you will find. You will find that Paul and his friend Silas, Paul and Silas have, have gone through a really, really difficult time. They've gone through a really, really rough patch all of a sudden. And the rough patch that's going on is that people aren't real happy about what they're doing and what they're saying as they are proclaiming the word of God in the area where they are. And because of all of this, and they've disrupted some people's ways of life in all fairness. If you go back earlier in this chapter, you'll see what I'm talking about. But here's what happens to Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas find themselves the subject and on the receiving end of being beaten. And when they get beaten, they receive many stripes. And the stripes that they had received upon their backs and what have you, once they had received all of these stripes, they were then put into jail. And when they were put into jail, it's important to understand that they weren't just put into jail, but where they were put into in the jail. They were not only put in the jail, the Bible lets us know that they were in the inner part of the jail, which really means the lowest part that was there. They were in the lowest part and they were kind of in the basement and it's not real clean, it's not sanitary. Things run downhill, if you will. And so they're down in this area and they're down in this dungeon, they're down in this jail, they've just been beaten, their backs have got some welts and maybe some open wounds and these types of things on them. And, and we find in this passage of scripture, we find down in there that they were thrust into this prison, they were locked up, their hands or feet were bound. And they were locked fast, they were held tight. And we look into this passage of scripture and we look at, we pick up in verse number 25 and we see something absolutely beautiful and something absolutely amazing take place. And what takes place is this. In verse number 25 of the same chapter, you find, it says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the, of the prison were shaken and immediately all of the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper, verse 27, and the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing that the prison doors were open, he drew out his sword and he would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Now let's go back and let's dissect this just a little bit. Here's what's going on. Paul and Silas have been arrested. People aren't real happy with them. They've disrupted some ways of life. What have you. They've been arrested. They've been beaten. And they have been put into prison in the innermost part. They've been chained down and locked down. And they've been chained down and locked down. And, the, and scripture teaches us that at midnight, they begin to pray and sing praises unto God. Think for this. Think about this for just a moment. When times are tough, when we're going through a battle, when we're dealing with something that's hard and difficult to go through, are we taking time to pray and sing praises? To God. I hope that we all. But the prisoners heard them. And Paul and Silas, they're singing praises and they're calling on to God. It's at midnight, their backs have got wounds on them, they're locked down, they're chained down, and they're singing praises unto God. And the prisoners are hearing them. Something miraculous happens at that point. And what happens at that point is there's this great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken and the doors opened up. 
and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper, the warden, the prison guard, he wakes up. He's been asleep. Wakes up and sees that the doors are open and immediately goes into a panic. He's going to fall on his sword, kill himself, for fear of what might be coming had all the prisoners escaped. Fear of what might be coming, Paul cries out and says, Hey, don't hurt yourself. We're all here. If all of us were in prison right now, we were locked up, chained up, bound up, whatever the case may be, and we suddenly got an opportunity to run free because doors opened up, but we're in prison and we've done something wrong, whatever, doors open up and the doors open up and we, we can run, would we? But you got to think about Paul and Silas's testimony here. They've been singing praises unto God. They've been praying to God. And the doors opened up, and just because they opened up, Paul and Silas, for that fleeting moment, maybe they thought, do I run for it? Do I break, make a break for it and try to get out of here? No. They not only stayed where they were, but all of the prisoners did. Their witness and their testimony and the things that they had been singing and praising God about and praying to Him for, the very things that everybody was hearing, these gentlemen, even though the doors were open, they stayed where they were. If you read on through this passage of Scripture, you'll not only find that they told the guard, hey, don't hurt yourself, we're still here. But they had an opportunity at that point to lead that guard, lead him to Christ, lead him to God. He asked, the guard asked, he said, hey, what have I got to do to be saved? Something was different. Something was out of the ordinary with these guys. These guys have been beaten. These guys have had a rough time just laid upon them. They've been locked down in the prison. They've been locked down and chained down. These guys are locked there. And they're praying. They're singing. They're singing praises to God. Why wouldn't they run for it? They stayed where they were to protect their testimony, to protect their witness, and have an opportunity to lead somebody to God. You know, we opened up with a song here just a little while ago, and that song we opened up says, We're gathered in His house to worship Him. Where Paul and Silas were, where they were praying, where they were singing, that became God's house. God inhabits the praises of His people. God is there. Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? Somebody give me some thumbs up on that. God inhabits the praises of His people. When we praise Him, when we sing to Him, when we reach out to Him, no matter where we are, it becomes God's dwelling place. Right now in our land, right now where we are, we're in some unusual times. We're in some difficult times right here. And the difficult times that we are is we're kind of hunkered around home. Can't get up, can't move. We're where we are. We might even feel like we've been in prison in some regard. But even though we're where we are, when we sing and when we praise to God, He's going to come down and He's going to inhabit that praise. Not only that, but when we do those things, we've got an opportunity. When we're trusting in Him, when we're relying on Him, when we're counting on Him, to be our protector, our deliverer, the one that's going to get us through this difficult time. When we're counting on Him, right where we are, we've got an opportunity to witness to the world, to those that are around us. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of, of those uh, uncertain feelings that's going on in the hearts of people. I'm no different from you. I don't like this any more than you. I have those same challenges like you. But when we call upon God, when we sing to Him, when we offer our praise to Him, He's going to inhabit that. And where we are becomes His dwelling place. And He gives us tools and resources and opportunities to reach out. I don't know how far reaching this message today is going to go. Fortunately, because of technology, 
You have the opportunity, folks. You have the opportunity to take this message today and to share it with your friends on Facebook and to get this message out there and to let them know, I'm going to stand, I'm going to sing, I'm going to pray, I'm going to offer praise to God, I'm going to trust in Him, I'm going to rely on Him, and I'm going to be useful and I'm going to be a witness. All of us are in the same boat right now. All of us are in the same boat and we're dealing and we're treading and we're going through some rough waters. But this is the time. This is the time that we need to let our light so shine before men that they'll see our good works. They'll see us singing praises. They'll see us trusting God. They'll see us praying. They'll know that we're doing it because we're telling them, we're showing them, we're living out loud. This is the time that we've got the opportunity to let our light so shine before men. That they'll see our good works, but that they will in turn glorify our Father, which is in heaven. You'll find that passage of scripture in Matthew chapter number 5 and verse 16. So wherever you are today, whatever you're dealing with today, those, those, the fear, the anxiety, the, whatever you're dealing with today, take time to sing. Take time to pray. Take time to call upon God. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells where you are. And he will give you that peace. He will give you that comfort. He will help you through this difficult time. He'll help all of us through this difficult time. And church, it's now the time that we become a light into a dark world. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on Him. Don't give in to anxiety. Don't give up on fear. Don't give in to fear. But instead, where you are, take time to sing and to praise. Take time to call upon Him. And take time to trust in Him. Without fail and without doubt. God's good. He always has been. And he always will be. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you where you are. I look forward to the day that we get to meet back and assemble in God's building. Where we can assemble as a group. We can call upon him. We can worship together. We're worshiping together today. But I look forward to the day that we can come back here. Until then, until then, we will use these resources. And we're still gathered in his name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity to be here today. We thank you, God, that you've given us this opportunity to worship you wherever we are, to call upon you, and God, that you inhabit our praise. God, I've sensed your presence through this, and I thank you for it. God, I pray for my fellow brothers and sisters, God, as part of the body of Christ. I pray for them, God, that you give them an inner strength, you give them peace, you give them comfort, Lord, you give them the ability Lord, to face the challenge that's ahead. Let our light shine, God. Let us be witnesses for you. Let us be useful tools and vessels for you, I pray, God. That we can shed and impart and help others to see the hope that's inside of us, God. That we can impart that to them of what it is. Just like Paul and Silas was not only able to do it for the prison guard, but the prisoners as well. They all remained in place. God, help us through this difficult time. Be with us. Give us opportunities to reflect you, to reflect you well, and to make you proud of everything that we do. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for being with us today. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Please, please share this message to your friends on Facebook. Please do that and reach out to those that you know you know, need a little bit of encouragement and hope today. God bless you. We will talk with you again soon. Take care and have a great day.